Okay, so uh, the reality is I don't know what's going to happen next. So we're all in the same boat, uh, and hopefully it will be uh, a painless experience. Um, and I can only guarantee you that everything I say won't be true, uh, but hopefully it will glide through the next 18 minutes smoothly and calmly. Um, so uh, improvisation uh, is kind of the art of making it up as you go along without criticism, without judgment, and without pre-deciding what's going to happen. Uh, which is what I'm doing right now. Uh, but part of it is about engaging with people and asking you lot to help me out. So um, the rules really of improvisation is not to um, self-edit and to sort of go with the first thing that comes into your head. The only thing I'm going to say is I'm going to be asking for some words or phrases. And there are young people in the room, so maybe not the first thing that comes into your head. <laughs> For some people, maybe not even the third or fourth thing, but just, you know, a little bit of delicate editing. But try and go with just the whatever comes into your head. Uh, and we are, I'm looking for four things. I should also point out this is the first time that we're going to try and live edit this slide with the tech guys behind. So we don't know whether this is going to work smoothly and wonderfully. So it's lots of learning. But in my theatre company, um, uh, Tin Whistle, what we try and do is to try and show the workings. I like the fact, I don't like theatre to be passive. I don't like people sitting in a dark room and then just clapping. Um, I want people to kind of see how theatre works and how theatre can engage people. So I'm looking for a word. Like I said, not necessarily the first word. Um, a question, a rhyme. If you can't think of a whole rhyme, just one word, and then somebody else might be able to help out with a word that rhymes. And then a statement at the end. So, who can give me a word? What's the first word that pops into somebody's mind? Community. Community. Thank you very much. Come on! <laughs> we have the technology! I might actually just get off the stage, so that's probably going to be the most impressive thing. Okay, what's the question? Anybody got a question for me? How does it work? How does it work? <laughs> I, I edited it myself then. Okay, <laughs> who can give me a rhyme or half of a rhyme? Broom from Froom. Broom from <laughs> and a statement. Who can give me a statement to finally get me going? And we've got a statement. A statement from today. What Can, can somebody make, give me a fact I'm or a tired. statement? I'm tired. <laughs> do you know what? I can do that. Let's go with, can we go with spread the love just to end on a more positive point? Yeah. Rather, <laughs> only because I have like got a nine-year-old son who keeps me awake at night and I am so tired. <laughs> but I might just sit here going, I'm going to do the tired thing for ages. Okay. So we have community, we have how does it work, we have broom from Froom, uh, and we have spread the love. Who knows what's going to come out of this, but hopefully, uh, like I say, not everything will be true, but it will be at least uh, pleasant, maybe? <laughs> Less painful? Uh, whatever it is. So uh, for me, as an actor and as a performer, um, I am really lucky that I grew up in the West Country uh, and that I uh, was surrounded by um, lots of creative theatre that happened. And literally, I used to go with my family and watch weird things in fields. And that was like on purpose, not just, you know. <laughs> I went to f festivals in theatre and I went to the most amazing festival in Froome once, ironically. Uh, and it was this whole uh, experience where you had to learn what is now known as Quidditch, but at the time was this really unheard of underground kind of sporting event. It was a strange one for me um, because what happened was I uh, suddenly discovered as a 13-year-old young man that I had a fascination for throwing balls through hoops whilst having a broom firmly wedged between my thighs. <laughs> the problem with a broom between your thighs and a ball in one hand is that you don't have much purchase for anything else. Uh, and this was uh, extremely um, prevalent when I realised that I had to then try and jump quite high in the air and throw the ball through the said hoop. Um, but what I did is I kind of, I thought, hang on, I was a resourceful young man, as you can tell. Uh, and I said, how does this work? How can I achieve the impossible. It's clear, isn't it? Magic. I decided that I would use the magic in gifted to me by a strange lady uh, called J um, something or other. No, JK, that's it. Yeah, two letters. She had in, in JKT, oh my God. Shh. 
She endows with something other than magic. Uh, anyway, I was, no, I got lost again. Uh, JK, uh, yeah, this woman in the field, she said to me, this is the gift of magic. So I decided, okay, right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to work out how it works. The broom uh, was firmly wedged, uh, and I jumped, and I literally flew through the air. The ball launched, and it went through the hoop, and I realized that I was the inspiration for Harry Potter. <laughs> I have not received royalties yet, and that is something that I need to work on. Uh, what I also worked out in these fields is that it takes more than just me to win a game of Quidditch. I needed a community of people behind me. I needed people that would hit balls with sticks. I needed people to shout. I needed a strangely tall giant who would also then kind of act like a kind of uncle figure in a slightly inappropriate way. Uh, not weird way. Just like in a kind of, you know, not the best role model. But anyway, the community was around me and I felt like I could achieve anything. And in that moment, in that field, the love was spread. So anyway, so that is basically the fundamentals of improvisation. Making things up as you go along, not worrying when you go wrong, and ultimately finding the ability just to talk rubbish. And what we have learned as adults is to edit everything that we say and we do. We literally sit there going, no, can't do that, I'm not going to say that, don't do this, Go stand like this, sit like this. And unfortunately, we teach it to our children from a really early age. Improvisation is playing like a toddler. It is literally that, I, that, that we always say it when kids get given a present and they open the box. And the box is the most exciting thing. Because there is nothing better in the world than an empty cardboard box, especially if it's as big as you. Because if you can get into that box, you can go anywhere. You can be anything. You can, tra I mean, literally travel to the moon and back. And all it takes is an empty box. And we spent so much money on the thing that we're, as adults, putting together. You will play with this. This cost plug that I haven't got the right cable. How have you not bought batteries? And the kids in the box going, I am literally saving the world. And the children's imagination is so free and so uncensored. And then through education, we teach them, but you don't do that. Oh, that's silly. Don't be like that. Don't say that. Don't do that. That's not real. And now we're trying to backfill and go, no, let's make them creative. And we're so lucky in Guernsey. I feel really privileged to work in education in Guernsey because of the, of the joyous and purposeful curriculum where they have put back in as a core functional skill creativity. And that to me is like the complete change and the reason why Guernsey can change the world because we have got things like that in place. We are asking children to make things up. The, the thing I love the most is having a ridiculous gibberish conversation with my son. We had that amazing laughing yoga uh, talk earlier and gibberish came up. And the gibberish is the thing that I'd like to start to share with you uh, in the few minutes that I've got remaining. And gibberish is the freedom to talk rubbish. Because words are the things that get in the way. Finding the right words to say, thinking about what you should or shouldn't say next is the thing that's going to stop you from being creative and stop you from uh, expressing yourself. And gibberish gives us the ability to communicate without words. And we're going to try some gibberish. I'm also aware that you've all sat very beautifully in a very kind of Western way and sat there going... <coughs> <laughs> Whatever you've been doing, you've been very passive. So we're going to kind of like just try a little bit. So you're going to just have a little go at gibberish. Now, please, let's not edit. Let's not have that dialogue that goes, I'm not doing it. No, I'm not doing it. Because if everybody goes, I'm not doing it, I'm not doing it, then nobody will do it. If you all go, ah, yeah, what's the worst that can happen? Uh, then we'll all be good. Gibberish is about trying to make a language completely of your own. It's sounds, it's noises, it's clicks, it's whistles. Uh, try and kind of avoid speaking a foreign language, only because it's a bit of cheating. What we try and do is we try and express ourselves through words. Okay, 
So it is just literally noises, don't think. But what you're going to do, I'm going to give you a little helping hand. You need to turn to somebody near you, and you could do it in a two or a three, there's no judgment here. And you are going to try and insult the person who's near you. <laughs> Whatever it is, just say the meanest thing. And then once they've said that to you, you say the meanest thing back. Don't hold back. They don't know what you're saying. That's the point. Ready? So after three, one, two, three. You're all too nice. Come on, mean it. Feel it. Wow. Okay, now make sure you've insulted them back. Insult them back. Okay. I just feel like we should uh, hold that back. A lot of you went, yeah, I've got some anger. <laughs> oh, I've got some stuff to come out here. <laughs> now, obviously, that's not where we're going to end this, because it's easy to insult people. We're so quick to get to the negative. But now I want you to think about paying your partner or your group a compliment. Tell them, Whatever it is, you... I mean, if something happens, I can't be responsible, but you know, pay them a beautiful compliment and tell them the best thing about them as a person or whatever it is you want to say. So ready? Again, after three, one, two, three. Okay, make sure you've paid everyone a compliment. We want to leave this positive. We want to leave it happy. Okay. Are we all, are we all feeling the love? Have we all felt the love again? <laughs> the great thing... <laughs> the great thing about improvisation and, and gibberish is that it requires us to start using our bodies a lot more to communicate. So what I was watching a lot of... I'm not going to tell you who I saw do this. There was quite a lot of this in the compliments. <laughs> it all became... Somebody in the back here. Quite round. But we gesture more. We made more of a kind of an effort to communicate because the words aren't there. And that's what gibberish will give you, the freedom just to explain. So if you do have... Um, I, I, my son, my nine-year-old son, uh, or almost nine-year-old son, uh, was adopted two years ago and came from a really troubled background and had a really rubbish start in life. And he gets really, really, really angry, uh, and rightfully so. So we kind of can't, you know, can't turn around to him and go, stop being angry, because you go, I understand why you're angry. But what I can say to him is, go, let's have an argument in gibberish. And he finds it hilarious, because I'm obviously being ridiculous. He can express all of his anger without swearing at me. Uh, and ultimately, we get rid of all the emotion. And he just literally loves that freedom. So that's a really great way. It's also a really great way of talking about kind of big emotional things that you don't want to use the words for, but you want to communicate uh, feelings and thoughts. And that's a really great tool. I was trained as a performer. Um, or studied a, a woman called Viola Spolin. Um, there's a couple of different trains of thought with improvisation. Uh, one's a kind of a more UK-based one, which is, and what people may be more used to is seeing short-form improvisation, like Whose Lines It Anyway? Quick comedy, lots of gags, lots of kind of uh, being clever and witty. Spolin is a slightly different side of it. She does a thing called long form comedy where you, uh, improvisation, where you do literally try and spend like 30, 40 minutes in character just ex exploring. But Spolin is an amazing uh, practitioner and she comes from America. She comes from a psychology background. She worked with children and, and young people. And what she says is that you, as performers, you have all the answers you need inside because you are built up of all your own experiences. But what we do, uh, as human beings is we kind of restrict our feelings and restrict our emotions. And I'm really privileged to teach at the College of FE and I teach young budding actors who are 16, 17, 18, and they're uh, emerging into their careers. And I had to spend a lot of time with them going, no, no, you can, you can express yourself, you can push yourself forward. And Spolin says, you have got the answers inside you. And that's what I say to them. It's like, you don't have to have experienced everything, you don't have to have been through everything, you just have to know how to feel. 
And we tend to know how to feel, we just sometimes repress those feelings. I'd also like to say, just to end, a huge thank you to Thrive, because you've managed to show me that I have the best job in the world, because I get to do physically active stuff, I talk and listen to people all the time, I get to pretend to be other people with different emotions and different histories, I get to play daily, and that is the most fun in the world, because I just make up rubbish. Uh, <laughs> I was saying to Greg that I probably should have a few more boundaries and probably should have a few more things that I, uh, a few more filters in place, but it's just not really who I am. And at the nearly grand old age of 40, I'm like, I'm not going to change. Just keep having fun. So I invite you all to come and play. It's so much fun on the bright side. Thank you very much.